How's it going guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, I know that a lot of you would love to go out and travel. However, you're scared of going out and traveling alone. I know that traveling alone is a scary thought. And that's why today, I'm going to give you 10 tips on how to meet people while traveling alone and make sure that you have an amazing time while traveling by yourself. Now, before we even get into the top 10, I'd just like to say, if you're traveling alone, you should be staying in hostels. It's the cheapest and most fun way to travel alone, and it also gives you the best chances of meeting people. That's why all 10 of these tips are going to be catered to people who are traveling in hostels. My first recommendation for traveling alone is right when you walk in, ask whoever's working there what activities they offer. Are there any local activities that they recommend or does the hostel offer group activities? I can say from personal experience that I've seen a lot of hostels that offer free walking tours and also hostels that offer free bar calls. Both of these are great ways to meet people who are staying in your hostel and get to know who's around you. Additionally, these activities are fun and you're sure to have a great time. Even if the hostel doesn't recommend any activities, the people working there will tell you which activities that they'd recommend to do. When I was staying in Manchester, they recommended me to do a free walking tour and it was the best walking tour I've ever been on. It was amazing. I learned so much and I had a great time and I met some awesome people. So if you're ever visiting Manchester, so definitely check out their free walking tour. Now my second tip is probably the most important tip and that's to pick the right type of hostel. Lots of people don't realize that there are so many different types of hostels and if you're wanting to meet as many people as possible I'd recommend either one staying in a backpackers hostel or two staying in a party hostel. Both of these types of hostels have a bunch of solo travelers staying in them and they're looking to go out have a good time and meet new people like yourself. Now my third tip for solo travelers is go to the hostel bar. The hostel bar always has people in it who are staying in your hostel, who are generally looking to socialize, and it's really easy to start up a conversation at a bar. Additionally, the bartenders usually work in the hostel, and they're usually really friendly people who are wanting to show guests a good time, get them involved in activities, and make sure that they have an excellent stay while staying at their hostel. They're great at getting you and all the other people at the bar to get connected and eventually go out on a group activity and have some fun together. I think I've personally met more people while traveling around a hostel bar than I've met anywhere else. And if your hostel doesn't have a local bar, then I'd recommend to ask some staff person working at the hostel what bar they'd recommend or where they recommend to go to meet new people. Now for my fourth tip is to stay in rooms of about 8 to 12 people. In my experience, if you stay in rooms that have 4 to 6 beds, you're not going to meet as many people. Additionally, if you stay in a private room, you're obviously not going to meet many people. However, I've also stayed in hostel rooms that have 16, 30 beds, and while I've enjoyed them, there's too many people to really meet them all, and also people don't spend as much time in their rooms when the rooms are that big. I found rooms that have 8 beds in them to be especially welcoming to meeting new people. It's the perfect size for maybe at one point during the day to have about 4 or 5 people in the room at once, and you can get talking to them and get to know them. My fifth tip for meeting people when traveling alone in hostels is go to breakfast in the morning. Most hostels offer free breakfast, but it's usually over around 9, 30, 10. And with the typical hostel lifestyle of going out and staying up late, you often might be a little hungover or still tired. My recommendation is go to breakfast, meet new people, and maybe you'll spark up some good conversations and make plans with people for later in the day. If you're feeling good, then you can immediately go out, check out the city. However, if you're still feeling hungover or tired, you can go up to your room, sleep for another hour or two, and then go out and have a great day. Now, my sixth tip for traveling alone in hostels is something that you can't do at every hostel, but that is to use the guest kitchen. Whether you go in there to cook your own meal or just get coffee and maybe microwave something, the guest kitchen is a great place to meet people. In a lot of guest kitchens, people are waiting for their food to cook and they're sitting around the kitchen table talking, playing cards. It's a great place to meet and talk to new people. Now my seventh tip is a little similar to the one before, but that's to hang out in the common hostel area. A lot of hostels have a common area where everyone can sit. They might have an area with board games, Jenga, a TV, maybe even like a foosball or ping pong table. Either way, these common areas are great to meet people. People are hanging out, relaxing, and usually open to talking to new people. So my eighth tip is go meet the staff. Meet them, hang out with them, become friends with them, ask them what they're doing, and maybe go out on some adventures with them. At most hostels, a lot of the staff you see are volunteers. They're people like you who are wanting to travel, but they're wanting to travel for really cheap. So they maybe work like five hours a day at the hostel, and then they get a free place to stay. Oftentimes they'll include free food, but they know everything to do in the city, and they're awesome resources for what you should do when you're traveling. Additionally, the staff won't just give you great recommendations for that city, but they can also give you recommendations for other nearby cities and places that they've traveled to recently. I usually pick the hostels that I stay at, not because of their reviews on Hostel World, but from the recommendations that I get from fellow travelers. The staff and volunteers at a hostel is what makes or breaks a hostel. It's what makes it so awesome. It's not the quality of the beds or the hostel itself that makes a hostel great. It's the staff and how they make sure you have a great time. So this brings me on to my ninth tip, and that is to become a hostel volunteer yourself. Being a hostel volunteer, you work just a little bit, you get a free place to stay, and you get to meet all these cool people and really get to know a city. I honestly believe I enjoy my time more being a hostel volunteer than I do just being a solo traveler. Whenever you're a hostel volunteer, you're not having to go out and meet friends. Awesome, interesting people are coming to you, they ask for recommendations, and you can give them recommendations of things you've done or things you want to do and then you literally have a group of people to go do those things with. Now you're probably wondering, how on earth do I become a volunteer? And I'm going to be completely honest with you, it's super easy. There's a couple websites you can go to that have thousands and thousands of places where you can go and stay for free in exchange for like four to five hours of work a day. They're not all hostels, but a lot of them are. 
My personal favorite is Workaway, and I'll link it in the description below. There's also a bunch of other websites, and however, Workaway is by far my favorite and the one that I think is the best. I personally used Workaway my first time volunteering abroad, and I had an amazing time. Just this summer, I worked in an amazing hostel in Bangkok, Thailand. It's called Playground Hostel, and if you're ever visiting Bangkok, I 100% recommend it. It's not that it's that fancy, but it's that the volunteers and the staff there are like family, and they'll do everything they can to make sure you have an amazing time when you're in Thailand. I was volunteering there for a month, and we constantly had people who came, went, traveled around Thailand, and then they came back to our hostel because they liked it so much. If you want to learn more about Workaway or how to volunteer in hostels, I'm going to be making a video of it shortly, and once I make it, I'll link it in the description below here. So check in the description to see that video. I'll also be making a video in the future about my time working at the Playground Hostel in Bangkok, Thailand. Now moving on to the tenth and final tip, and that is say yes. Whenever you're traveling in hostels, people are going to ask you if you want to go out or if you want to go do this. Just say yes. Obviously have good judgment, but if you're ever feeling tired or lazy or you just don't want to go out, say yes. You're traveling, live it up. This is your time to experience new things and have a great time. Don't say no to going out with friends you met that day just because you went out the night before, or you're tired or whatever. Push all those excuses to the side and live it up while you're traveling because it's going to be the best time of your life. So these are my 10 tips on how to travel alone and meet new people while you're traveling. It's getting dark outside so I need to wrap up this video quick, but I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please give it a like. I really appreciate it. Also subscribe below if you want to see more videos that I make. If you know anyone who's thinking about going and traveling, show them this video. I really appreciate it and I wish all of you a great time on your travel adventures. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.